how do you define feasible allocations in this economy okay so feasible allocations you know you can just just uh, imagine that you have total amount of uh, uh, private good in this economy is omega 1 plus omega 2 okay uh, so total amount of private good in this economy is omega 1 plus omega 2 and it has three uses right i mean uh, basically it is used by either individual one okay uh, for private consumption okay or individual two for private consumption or part of it is used as input uh, for uh, for producing public good is that okay so basically we know that omega 1 plus omega 2 minus x1 minus x2 okay so this is basically the amount that is used amount of the private good that is used by individual uh you know for for final consumption okay and uh you know uh, the remaining is used uh as input uh you know to produce the public good so f of whatever remains must be equal to g okay so this gives you the you know condition for feasibility okay this is the condition for feasibility okay so uh so what is feasible uh well feasible is x1 x2 g okay in r3 plus such that this equation holds right is that fine this is the set of all feasible allocations let me call this f now how to actually draw a picture of this you know um Again, you can see that this feasible set is sitting somewhere in R3 plus, okay? It's a, it's a subset of R3 plus, okay? Now, uh, I don't want to draw a three-dimensional plot, okay? Uh, but we have seen something, you know, that, uh, you know, we have already used in the past where we have actually uh, plotted something that was there in R4 plus in two dimensions, okay? So if you remember, we plotted edge box okay uh, where uh, we had uh, you know x1 y1 x2 y2 uh, in r4 plus and then we use the feasibility to draw this box in the two dimensions okay and uh, we were able to represent the set of all feasible allocations using edgeworth box now we cannot use edgeworth box here okay the reason is because you know uh, in edgeworth box the commodities okay they are both rival and uh, uh, excludable you know why it is rival because if you go from this point to this point you know you are basically increasing the consumption of x for individual one right okay for individual one you are increasing the consumption of good x okay but at the same time you are you are reducing the consumption of good x uh, you know for individual two do you agree individual two consumes a uh, lesser quantity here uh because you are giving more uh to to consumer one is that okay so basically there is rivalry okay and you can also exclude the person totally from consuming a good let's say for example if you look at this point or you look at this point for example you know you at this point you have excluded the person from consuming all of both the commodities uh similarly at this point you know you you are able to exclude uh, a person uh, from consuming ex exclude person two uh, from from consuming uh, you know uh, good x okay uh, so you know there is rivalry and excludability you know both are true about you know the goods that are uh, uh, that we represent uh, you know using edgeworth box is that okay so uh, so we cannot use edgeworth box okay now what can we use okay so actually there are two types of pictures that you can draw uh, basically two types of graphs that are used uh, you know in literature uh, to actually represent a uh, set of all feasible allocations uh, for 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 a public good economy okay uh, one is known as cones triangle cones triangle and the other is Dolbear's triangle. Okay, I, I'll tell you both, okay, but I'll be using this one, okay? 
so in case you want to re, you know read this up read up about doll bear's triangle you know i can uh, and the cone triangle i can send you some reference okay uh, uh, but uh, you know these are the two uh, triangles that you can actually use to uh, plot set of all feasible allocations uh, you know in a public good economy okay